This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description to sign up for free and support this channel. As you're watching this video right now on your screen, billions upon billions of tiny quantum objects called photons are entering your eyes. They're the universe's smallest fundamental carriers of measurable energy. They carry not only energy, but also information. It's what makes up light. It's what allows you to see and gather information about your surroundings. But photons are much more important than even that. They're the carriers of the electromagnetic force, which keeps atoms together and is the foundation for electricity and modern electronics. If photons did not exist, not only would the universe be dark, but life as we know it would not exist. Given the importance of photons, as you might imagine, scientists have studied them tirelessly for decades, so we seem to know a lot about them. Yet, if I asked the fundamental question, do photons have mass, what would be your answer? This might seem like a really silly question, and in every textbook, you've probably ever read, the answer is clearly no. But is that really the case? Is it proven that light does not have any mass? Has anyone ever actually confirmed this in a measurement? Hmm, not really. So what's the answer? It's a bit more nuanced, and I'm going to explain that coming up right now. We've measured the speed of light incredibly accurately. It's 299,792,458 meters per second. Einstein's theory of relativity tells us that massless objects always move at the same velocity in a vacuum, which is the speed of light. This assumes that the photon is massless, but it conceptually doesn't have to be. We presume that the photon is massless, and if it's massless, it must travel at the maximum speed allowed in the universe. And this speed is finite because we measure it to be so. Why is it the case that a massless object must travel at the maximum speed? This can best be seen by looking at this energy-momentum relation, where total energy is equal to the rest energy plus the momentum energy. If there's no mass, that is, if m is zero, then since the object must have some energy to exist, the velocity can only be c, the maximum velocity. Now, if we combine the equations for velocity from special relativity and insert it into this energy-momentum equation, we can get an equation that shows velocity in terms of mass and momentum. You'll notice that the velocity of a photon has to be c, the maximum velocity, if its mass m is zero. But if a photon has a slight mass, its velocity is not the maximum. It would be less than c. Now, it could be that the velocity of the photon is in fact not c, the maximum velocity, but something less than that. But since we've not measured anything faster, we presume that the speed of light is the maximum velocity. But is that really the case? Well, we don't really know. Conceptually, it doesn't matter what the speed of light is in special relativity. What matters is the speed of information flow. This is necessary to ensure that causality is not violated. I made a detailed video on how causality could be violated if you go faster than the speed of information flow. You can check it out here if you want to know how that works. In the case where the speed of light is less than c, then c would represent the speed of information, not the speed of light. This speed would be the maximum speed allowed in the universe. So the true limit of special relativity is the limit of information flow, the speed of causality and not the speed of light. If photons, which make up light, are truly massless, then the speed limit of information is equal to the speed of light. But if photons have a slight mass, then that would mean that information could travel faster than light. Now you might think this would be a problem, but it really wouldn't be. Since photons are the fastest way we know to send information, it would just mean that we don't have a means to communicate at the maximum speed, but only at the speed of light, which would be slower than that. This would not invalidate relativity theory. The speed of light being the definition of c in the theory is because we assume photons are massless. With a massive photon, we would just need to decouple the speed of light from the speed of causality. It's just for practical purposes that we state relativity in terms of the speed of light, but we could just as well say speed of causality to be more specific. The problem is that we actually don't know if photons really are massless. Why is this the case? 
Well, to this day, we've not been able to devise an experiment to truly test this. Experiments on Earth tell us the mass of photons, if it has mass, can't be larger than 10 to the negative 18 electron volts, because we would have been able to detect that mass. In other words, if it has mass, that mass is smaller than our experiments can detect. I have a link in the description if you want to know where this number comes from. Our theories tell us that it should be massless, but there's nothing else we can measure which could be faster. Imagine if there were some particle which moved at the speed of information. If we measured the velocity of this particle, then we could compare this to the speed of light and check whether it's faster or not. If it's slower, it must have mass because special relativity tells us that truly massless particles move at the speed of information or the speed of causality. There's only one other known particle that is thought to be massless, the gluon. This is the elementary particle which carries the strong force. It's responsible for keeping the quarks which make up neutrons and protons in the nuclei of atoms glued together. Without it, the nuclei of atoms would fall apart. There would be no atoms, no sun, no earth, and no life as we know it. But the problem is that due to the laws of the strong force, these gluons are not free and are always bound with quarks and possibly with themselves in glue balls within the nuclei of atoms. So we can't really measure the speed of these gluons as they cannot propagate freely like photons can. Because we have no experiment which can conclusively test if the photon is really massless, the real answer to the question, do photons have mass, is actually, well, we don't know. We only know that if photons do have mass, that mass must be incredibly low. But this would mean that the speed of light is not the speed of causality. You might say, but I thought the whole universe would be completely different if photons had a mass. This is true if the photon had a significant mass. While we don't know if it's truly massless, we know that it is practically massless. So the universe would not be too different. The lightest particles we know of are neutrinos, and at one time we actually thought they were massless too because we don't have a good theory to explain why they should have a mass or how they gain that mass. According to the standard model, they don't interact with the Higgs field, so they should not have a rest mass. But experiments seem to show that they are slightly massive. But neutrinos are so light that we don't know their mass precisely. We just know that they must not have a mass higher than about 0.8 electron volts. Otherwise, we would have detected that mass. To give you an idea of the relative mass of photons compared to neutrinos, which seem to be almost massless, photons would still be around one quintillion times lighter than neutrinos. Remember that until recently, we thought neutrinos were massless because they're practically moving as fast as photons. So you'd be hard pressed to experimentally detect the difference between a truly massless particle and a photon with such a tiny mass. But what would we notice if photons did have a mass that we could detect? In other words, what would happen if they had a significant mass? Well, there would be some differences that could be observed. One example would be that the electromagnetic force would become finite. If you consider a magnet and sprinkle iron dust around it, you'll see the irons being affected by the magnet by the electromagnetic force. The strength of this force decreases as an inverse of distance. This is why you see a slow decrease in the effect of the iron dust as you go further away from the magnet. But if the photon was a lot more massive, then you would see a different pattern. Depending on the exact details, it might be that the range becomes so short that the magnet only affects the most nearby iron dust and has no effect on the dust further away. Another change you would notice with a significantly massive photon is that higher energy photons, that is photons with a shorter wavelength, would travel faster than longer wavelength photons. This can be seen by rearranging this equation showing the de Broglie wavelength for massive particles. Now this probably would not make much of a difference if you were looking at still objects. But a moving object, like a fast white car at a distance, might look like a blur of colors, with the blues being further away than the red. This is because the blue color within the white of the car would reach your eyes before the red color. Another effect that would come with a massive photon is gravity bending light like a prism. This is because the energy corresponding to different wavelengths would bend differently in a gravitational well because faster colors like blue would be more likely to escape the gravitational well and bend less, whereas slower colors like red would bend more because they move slower. 
So any light behind distant heavy stars would resolve into different colors of the spectrum, like a prism. But if such effects were noticeable, then at this point the photon would be so massive that there would be other weird effects as well. The observable universe would appear to be much smaller because light from very far distances would not have reached us yet. The cosmic microwave background, or CMB, might not be visible because its light may not have reached us yet. But these space-time descriptions are not what we observe. We can detect the CMB, and we don't see any prism or smudging effects of light. So we can be pretty sure that any photon mass, if it is not truly massless, is very small. So basically, there's no big problem with continuing to use our current equations describing the universe, even with a massive photon, because from our experiments and observations, its mass is predicted to be so small that it's practically massless. But the argument can be made that we don't have any observations that support a truly massless photon. So the possibility that it really does in fact have some mass at this time cannot be excluded. Now I suspect a lot of you will probably want to explore this subject in much more depth, but one of the hurdles many people encounter in getting super deep into this is understanding the complicated math. The hands-on math courses available at Brilliant, today's sponsor, can really help you get a better understanding. The great thing about the Brilliant Advanced Math Learning Path is that it starts with trying to help you get an intuitive understanding. So for example, in the Calculus in a Nutshell course, it starts with just trying to build an intuition for limits, derivatives, and integrals. This kind of learning from the ground up approach is, in my opinion, the best way to impart a deep understanding that builds the foundation for more advanced concepts later in the course. In addition, they make it fun by using graphics, interactive quizzes, and hands-on simulation. Brilliant has something for everyone, with thousands of lessons over a variety of STEM courses, with new content added each month. With as little as 30 minutes a day, Brilliant can not only help you develop your advanced math skills, but also become a better thinker. Brilliant has a special offer for Arvind Ashbeard right now. Get started for free for a full 30 days by clicking the link in the description. The first 200 people will even get 20% off their subscription. I encourage you to give it a try. I think you'll gain a lot. In addition to Brilliant, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. Your generosity helps pay for these animations. I really appreciate it. And if you like our videos, please subscribe so that you can be informed when we post new videos. But tell me what you think. Is the photon massive or not? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.